Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop and it's not repair time again. Yes, I have a board in front of me that I'm not going to repair. So let me explain. PCBWay is your one-stop solution that's been expanded from their large variety of PCB prototyping solutions to 3D printing, CNC machine work and sheet metal fabrication. PCBWay also has a growing community on their site where it's become an open platform for makers to exchange and share their ideas, including the PCBWay store where some of the hottest modules can be purchased. I've been using PCBWay for years for my own products. Always reliable, always quality and always on time. So this circuit board is from a kitchen hob. It's not mine, it's not my hob. I've just been asked to take a look at the board and see if I could repair it. And what actually happened was I was told the hob stopped working and the guy that owns it is an engineer and he took it apart with a view to working out what was wrong or replacing anything that was faulty. And when he saw this board, it's one of two inside the hob, he noticed immediately that there was a catastrophic failure with the board. Now as you can see, the top side looks pretty pristine, nothing wrong at all. But if I turn it over, you'll see down here there are some marks. Now I have actually already cleaned off the board. This whole area around here was completely blackened and there was nothing else wrong with the rest of the board. There's no other blown components, no burst capacitors, leaky capacitors, transistors with a physical problem etc etc. Now I had a look at the board both sides and the only problem I could find was this area around here which has got some blown tracks on the board. Now I did take a look at the circuit board both sides and apart from the blown tracks on that underside there is nothing physically wrong on the top side. From the incoming AC over here, you've got the live and neutral coming in here and an earth. You've got a couple of common mode chokes. You've got some capacitors. You've got some switching relays there. A small transformer, which I think is for powering the uh, control circuitry on the underside. And you've got a large bridge rectifier here, converting that AC 240 volts to DC. And over here, you've got four MOSFETs two per channel because over here this is where the rings I'll call them are actually connected and you can see we've got a couple of CTs measuring the current going out onto each one of those rings and you've got a bunch of capacitors here across that output uh, from the output from the actual MOSFETs. Now I did put the meter on some of the components, bridge rectifier turned out it was okay. The only problem I could find was these two MOSFETs here are completely and utterly dead short. All three pins are shorted together. No cracks or anything like that on the actual MOSFET itself, but MOSFETs are shorted. Now, why don't I just replace some MOSFETs and power it up and see if it's working? Well, like I said earlier, it's not my hob and I can't guarantee the reason for the failure of this board was solely down to those MOSFETs and I'd hate the guy to go and put the board in, power it up and it lasts five minutes and blows again because of some other fault on the board. But the main reason actually I don't want to actually go ahead and fix it is down back onto these blown tracks here. Let's take a closer look. So on the underside of the board, as I said earlier, here's a section here that's got those blown tracks. But you can see over at this side here, we've got a PIC microcontroller and some other electronics doing the actual control. And you've got four TLP350s, those are MOSFET drivers driving the gates of the four MOSFETs that you can see there. But taking a look at this area of the board here that I'd cleaned up, you can see that there's four large pads. And I think it's a little bit easier to see if you look over here because we've got something very, very similar. It's marked F1, whereas this one was marked F2. Now what that actually is, is PCB trace fuses. 
instead of having a surface mount fuse something like that on the other side of the board the design actually uses the actual tracks on the board as fuses and in this case we've kind of got four in series there with a large pad interconnecting those fuses. Now why have four? Why not just have one and just link it between uh, this one here and this one here? Well, number one, you wouldn't put a long trace along there and expect that to act as a fuse. Now it would actually act as a very good fuse, but the problem is there's a metal plate uh, this board's mounted the other way around and there's a metal plate mounted pretty close to the surface of this board and you can imagine that if that was one long track and it basically blew then the actual track could curl off the board and actually touch the metal plate and that would expose it to 240 volts so we keep the fuses the little small track there as short as possible and I think they've put four of them just to hedge their bets because they can't guarantee because it's a little bit of an art using a track as a fuse because the actual tracks tinned as you can see there uh, you've got width to take into consideration you've got the uh, thickness of the track as well so you can't guarantee it's going to blow at an exact current so by putting four in series with a large pad in between then you're hedging your bets and that's very similar to what we've got over here except we've got five you can see the large pads one two three four five six and you've got one two three four five blown tracks now any one of them or more could have blown at any one time but they must have been pretty equal and they all blew all at the same time and that would have been due to the catastrophic short on those MOSFETs. It drew a lot of current right through those fuses there. Now I did get a look at the working board and I did actually see the width of the tracks and the length of them properly and KiCad actually has a calculator for working out the uh, fusing rating of PCB traces and going by the woods that were on these tracks I reckon it was probably about 15 amps a piece and given they blew pretty well catastrophically and with the black residue that was all over the board there I reckon these saw at least 40-50 amps minimum now I'm not going to repair this board because you can't really repair those tracks. What you definitely wouldn't do is just start linking them out with a uh, single strand wire or something like that. That's just a complete no-no. And the other problem is if you're going to put an external fuse on like a little 15 amp carry or something like that, how do you physically attach it to the board? Because if we look at the other side, one of the uh, sides of that fuse goes on to this common mode choke here and the other one goes on to this relay here which you can only get access to on the underside so to actually secure it properly and I wouldn't rely on a simple solder joint I would want to wind it round a proper leg of some resistor or capacitor or something like that so to rely on connecting it there it's just a non-starter so in this case, I've got a faulty board, but I'm not going to repair it. Thanks for watching.